talk, just enjoy the drive. The gun, might you the gun with me, okay? Don't okay. care about me. I come out, I will meet means good. Five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs>
going so fast, but I don't feel scared at all. Yeah. <laughs> I don't feel scared at all. You're a great girl. Huh? <laughs> You're a very good driver, Mike. No, 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 okay. Similar, yeah. Uh, because every tuner, mm. you know, has their own characteristics, like. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't say we are the best, or who is the best in the tuning world. Yeah. Is, uh, you know what what you want from the tuner, I guess. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, so what does DNA tuning do that is special as compared to the other tunes, or specifically what are people looking for okay. when they go to DNA tuning? Uh, I mean, if you understand the DNA you know, so what happens is that every car has its own DNA yeah. you know, so the, we try to replicate uh, the car's own characteristics and how the power is being delivered okay. Okay. but we deliver it with a bigger power band and top band okay. uh, that's what we do so in essence tuning, DNA tuning will give your car more of a top uh. yes but in a linear fashion uh, and we try to dial out a lot of the uh, uh, flat spots. Flat spots, meaning? Yes, uh, meaning sometimes, you know, when you put your throttle down, right, you feel that a certain RPM, uh, yep. your car doesn't want to pull. Okay. Oh, you just wow. maintain at that RPM for a second or two okay. before you feel that the car is actually accelerating again. So that's what you call flat spots? Yes. Yes. Okay. You know, so, so every car is a bit different. Like. Okay. Mm. But you specialize mainly in Conti cars, am I right to say that? Uh, at the moment, yes. Okay. Uh, but uh, in fact, any ECUs you can tune, uh, uh, including Mazdas. Okay. Uh, lately, we have been doing some Kias and Hyundai's as well. So now we are in his Corrado of 20. Five years. Five years. Yeah, going 26. Going 26. He's <laughs> a few years younger than me. And uh, he actually brought this Corrado to Evo and Hero. Is it yeah. to Huahin or Huahin, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. So the first time was to Huahin. Yep. So his car, 25 years all the way to Huahin. Yep. So Mike is an avid Volkswagen guy. Why? Why Volkswagen? Uh, How many I... cars actually have you had throughout your. Oh, many, uh, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Can't recall. Like when we speak, he'll be like, oh yeah, my, my mark took off, then oh yeah, that, that time I had this, then I was like, wow, I also cannot keep track of how many cars you have had already. Uh, yeah, it all started uh, back in the late 70s, early 80s. Okay. You know, when my brother brought back this photo car magazine okay. from the UK, uh, I think he brought back two or three boxes of those. How he old were you then? I think I was 15 then, okay. 13. 
13 to 15 years old. Yeah. So beginning to read all those magazines and uh, I got fascinated by the Golf GTI. Uh, you know, uh, what was it about the Golf GTI? Uh, it was one of, uh, it was the first hot hatch ah, okay. uh, ever made around you know, the 1976. Uh. Okay. Uh, and you like the design of it? Yes. And because that car you know surprised a lot of the 911s and all that because uh, mm. Keep up with the 911s and actually beat them at the bands and all that. Okay. Yes. So okay. it was an uh, underdog, and it's a car that you can also still uh, take your family out in it. Mm. Was that the Mark One Golf? Mark One Golf. Oh. Yes. Now we're at like Mark Seven, Mark Eight. Yes. <laughs> all right. Yes. And then when I was studying in Canada, yep. You know, uh, I didn't have the funds to go and buy a Mark One Golf. How much was it? Uh, I think then was about six and a half thousand for a used one okay. in Canada. Yeah. But we managed to influence one of our roommates to buy one. Poison <laughs> lah, you poison, mean poison. poison him so that I can get to drive it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's yeah. what friends are for, Correct. right? <laughs> and my first experience with the VW was actually the Scirocco Mark 1. Yeah, so Back I, never, I never knew that there was a predecessor for the current Scirocco. Yes, two I... actually. The oh. current one is actually get uh, we call it the Matri lah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yes. Uh, which is no longer current now. Yep. You know, they yep. discontinued it. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Oh. Is it Shanker? Is it Shanker? Yeah, Shanker. Coming back, you yep. were saying that uh, you drove the Mark 1 Golf and then the Shiroko. Yeah. Then, yep. you know, because the, the GTI was still a GTI and it was uh, quite a bit more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. So I was there driving you know, two, three thousand dollar cars. Mm, and then I had a Renault, had two Renault Fuegos. You had two Renault. Yeah, Fuegos and Honda Civic. Yeah. And then an Audi is probably. Think. Which Audi? Uh, they probably Audi four thousand, which was an Audi AT actually. So that, that's when it started? Yes. That's when your love yes. for the v dubs started? Correct. Correct. So why the Corrado? Oh, why the Corrado? Because in 1989, yeah. when I first saw this Corrado, it was the coolest thing that I say I must go and buy. Really? Yes. When it first launched? When it first launched. Uh, Bang, I do not know whether you know, this car has an active spoiler behind. No! It has now, a... now I see that, I'm just overriding oh. it. See? Yes. Yeah. There it rises. Yes, I never knew. What? I never knew. Wow. Yeah. So now let's see if we can get a straight uh, stretch of road that we can get it. Oh, perfect. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. You see now it rises. Oish. So at what speed do you have to hit before it starts to rise? Uh, Ninety kilometers an hour. Okay. Or fifty miles an hour. Your speedometer is still in miles. Yeah. So this is yes. a VR6. Yep. Could you explain more about the engine? I've never heard about the term VR6 before. Oh, okay. Uh, VR6 in German means narrow and uh, straight lines. Uh, inline. Uh, not inline six. Uh -huh. uh, it's like a narrow angle V6. Narrow angle V6. Yes. Correct. The and uh, most of the engines is either 60 or 90 degrees, right? Yeah. Uh, the V configuration. This mm -hmm. one, the configuration is just 15 degrees angle. So how will that affect? So with the 15 degrees angle, yep. you can actually have one cylinder head on it instead of two cylinder heads. Okay. Yeah, so that saves cost. Okay. <laughs> and one more thing is that the way it's packaged yep. so that you can have it in the front wheel drive chassis. So it's short enough. I see. Yeah, to have it in the front wheel drive cases. Because it's usually found in rear wheel drive? Uh, not exactly. They designed this so that it can fit under the bonnet of a front wheel drive car. Okay. Mm. okay. So the Corrado was the first one to have this VR6 in it. And in Europe, they, they, 
use it uh, in a 2.9 package, yeah. 2.9 2 liters. Yeah, so yours is a 2.9. Ah, 2.9. Yes. And you were saying that this is uh, based on the Mark II Golf chassis. Yes. And the rear suspension of a Passat. Correct. Which is a torsion beam. Ah, torsion beam axle, yes. Uh, and the good thing about this axle at the back is that yeah. uh, Bit of river steering when you load it up into a corner. Yeah. Yeah. You know, which you had experience just now. <laughs> yes, so we were going at certain speeds and I just I just couldn't figure out. The thing is it didn't it honestly doesn't really feel like a front wheel drive. It's so blunted and at times where at the corners it felt like an all-wheel drive as well. And at times it feels like the car is being pushed. <laughs> Correct! Yeah. So so many characteristics in one car itself. Yeah, basically you Yes, need to uh, control the throttle uh, you know, the And just now I had a go at the manual, just 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 a little bit like I don't think I reached 50 kmh uh. <laughs> Within the next few minutes in my heat engine then you have to edit them, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I think like that's the max. Yeah, 50 60 lah. Yeah, because training, going yes. downhill. Right. Wow, so many factors involved. But thank you, Mike, for the opportunity. Welcome, welcome. Uh, so, yes, I was driving it and the manual felt. Doesn't really feel. It feels like, like what he said, it's a very forgiving manual. Yeah. So, the biting point, the clutch in, it's not a heavy clutch. The biting point is very forgiving. So, there's a lot of travel. So when it starts to bite as well, you know when the car vibrates and it vibrates for quite quite a while before it actually mati engine. So you can yeah. Yeah, you, you can make a few mistakes and the car will still like it's okay. Yeah. I will yeah, yes, <laughs> I I I I'm still alive. A I wouldn't be yeah. guy in front yeah. pushing you. <laughs> correct, correct. So you have bought a lot of meetups and sold a lot of meetups. Why haven't you sold the Corrado? Uh, with the Corrado, it has a certain magic to it. I feel. And this is not the only Corrado you have, right? Yes, I've got another one which I need to reveal for Isaac. Like, you know? <laughs> but yeah. this is your special one? Uh, at the moment, yes. This is your soft spot one? Right? Correct, soft spot, yes. This is the one that has uh, taken me and my boys up to Kwahin, back, you know? Yeah. And a lot of memories. Uh, This car is going to Brian. Yeah. Oh, so this car is going to Brian. Yes, and the other one I'm rebuilding. And to go, that's going to go to Isaac. So even the cars that you pass down to your boys are both Corrados? Yes. yes. So is the other Corrado the same engine as this? Uh, yes, the original 2.9 got blown. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it has a 2.8 in it currently. Okay. But I have already got a hole of a 2.9 block, which okay. I'm going to put it back inside. Okay. Okay, and uh, Isaac, you gotta buy your own pistons so that you can make it 3 liters. Okay, I'll help you do that. But you gotta buy your own pistons. Earn your own, own, your own, own, earn your own money. This on top of the, you know, drop the top that you're going to get also, right, Isaac? Yeah. Yeah, and just for me to drive. You must respect your elders yes. and your mother's age. Yes. If you want a car, you give me a Porsche Boxster. La. Go Boxster Spider Street. Correct. <laughs> So I understand that there are different variants of the engine as well. There's the 1.8 NA, there's the 1.8 supercharger. Yes, what happened is when they first launched the car, mm. you know, they had a 1.8 supercharger engine. Yeah. You know? uh, at this time, 1989, you know, an engine that can push out 160 horses. Uh, yeah. you know, that was something already uh, you know, back yeah. then. Open port in it is a lot louder than uh, it usually is. Okay. Yeah. So how has your ownership of the Corrado been? Uh, actually very good. This particular car actually I bought it from the original owner that brought it back from the UK. Uh, and I actually saw this particular car back in 1997 at the TBR factory. 1997? Yes, at the TBR factory. Because uh, I was doing some work with TVR back then. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the owner was actually the owner of this car was actually running the factory. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. 
so yep. in, in 2012, yep. he called me. Yeah. My, I, I am letting go of the Shiroko. I'm letting you have the first go at it. I made a deal with him. Yeah. Bought the car. <laughs> like, is it easy to find parts? Is it expensive to maintain? I think the parts are the difficult parts, are, you know, especially the interior and the, the interior as well as the exterior parts you know, and the plastics, plastics on this car. Okay. You know, like just like this uh, scraper here. Yeah. I haven't uh, been able to find it yet. Yeah. The inside one. <laughs> so even though it's a twenty-five year old car, yeah. it makes less noise as compared to my 2009 car which is like 11 years old so when I first got into the car I was very amazed at how quiet it actually is there's not much creaking going on when you drive it it feels so solid I don't know actually I hear a lot really yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I think if you come into my car you'll be like babe what are you doing to your car what, what, is, what are all these noises the other day when I drove your car uh. I didn't hear anything, I was just enjoying the, the wind. Ah, <laughs> I was enjoying the wind. <laughs> <laughs> That's why when you drop the top, uh, all yes. is forgiven. <laughs> yes, yes, correct. Okay, so the maintenance, is it as bad as... You know, Volkswagens tend to have a bad name to the maintenance. Yes. They have like many issues. The most common issue is the dry clutch. Lah. Correct. Uh, I agree with you on that. Uh, so far, for me, mm. this particular car hasn't been too bad. Okay. Uh, when I rebuilt it in 2015, I think. Yeah. Ignition cables, two sensors. I think last year I did the clutch pumps, okay. the master and the slave. Ah, okay. Yes. Yeah. You know, Difficult most of the clutch pumps. Ah, uh, no, it's common with the Golf. Ah, okay. The Golf VR6 Mark III. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so there are a lot of parts around. Okay, so does it still share a lot of parts with the current beat-ups? <laughs> okay. Cause no. even for uh, Lenny's MX-5, we had to yeah. change the master and slave as well. Yes. So she took it from a Ford Ranger. Oh, alright. And I yeah. don't know how the mechanic did it, but yes. he managed to tweak it in yeah. order to fit the MX-5. Yes. yes. Saying that, I got to get the slave pump as well. I uh -huh. keep a spare of the slave pump okay. as well. Yes. So what, what are the major issues that you have faced with your much actually. Nothing much. Uh, upgraded the radiator yep. so that it can cope with the Malaysian weather. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Really yes. nothing much. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now I've got the idling issues. Yes. You say you have to <laughs> clean it. Clean right? the ISV. Okay. Yeah, the, the idling valve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you know, keeping up with the old car sometimes these are some of the idiosyncrasies yeah. Yes, yeah. that you have to keep up with <laughs> so it's the parts issue yes. because I think, I think for you also you know cars very well yeah. so when you were explaining to me when Mike was explaining to me he specifically knew mm. oh, what part of the car was wrong what he needs to do to overcome it whereas someone like me I'd be like oh I don't hear making sound lah. maybe this I'm not too sure yeah. and you know a lot so let's say if someone were to buy a Corrado now or they yes. are thinking, contemplating whether to get it or not, yeah. what would you recommend? Uh, I think it? it's a fantastic time to get hold of these cars. Okay. Because what was happening, in, uh, I think about four or five years ago, mm. uh, they were scrapping a lot of these cars all over the world. Oh my god, you did yeah. some too long. Yeah, so uh, now the prices of Corrado has started to climb. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. In, even in the UK, in yeah. Europe, and in America as well. Mm. Suddenly, people realize, you know, these cars are no longer around. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, because I think this car was scrapped by Volkswagen, uh, discontinued by Volkswagen in 1995, okay. was because of the low sales. Okay. Uh, because this car was fairly expensive in its day. Okay. I think when the car was launched, it was launched at 22,000 pounds or something. Yes, which was a, yes, which was a lot of money in yeah, I, even 1992 now, dollars ah. Even now, so you like twenty-two thousand, quite a lot. Yes. So at that point of time, yeah. Can Correct. Yes. And I, you say is it, it even had a cabriolet version and a station wagon? No. Uh, yes, but those were one off ah. Okay. Yeah, the, the Volkswagen factory did. But that's mm. the thing; they were so experimental back then. Yes. 
I mean this is a 2 plus 2 I, I would never imagine a 2 plus 2 having a station wagon from 2 door becoming like 4 door and then uh, the cabin. That was still 2 door actually the station wagon Station wagon? Ah. Sta wow! Yeah still 2 doors Yes. So I learned something new again <laughs> Yeah 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 still 2 doors yeah. Oh. Yeah. The Cabriolet also was a one off lah mm -hmm. as far as I remember yeah. So last question. Yeah. Most memorable experience? Uh, again, the Huahin trip. Huahin with my trip boys uh. in this car. Yeah. And, it, and it was good the whole time? Uh, we had a bit of one of the plug cables going. Okay. You know, so before... In fact, by the time we were close to the border, we already had the misfire. But we soldiered on till Huahin. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of places we were still doing 80, 100 miles an hour. <laughs> so, do you manage to find the replacement? Uh, yes, because the engine is common to Volkswagen. Uh, you know, a lot of the T5 wagons, uh, you know, running the VR6 engines as okay, well. Okay. Yes, okay. Yes. So, you found it in Thailand? Or? Yep. So, we replaced that. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. I guess these are the perks of older cars because they are so mechanical. Yeah, very mechanical. So, Correct. any like any mechanic would look at the engine and like, oh, okay they'll be yeah. able to understand those yes. those older mechanics are not just plugged into the yeah. you know the, the, the computer and then you get to diagnose what's wrong with the car yes, yes. there is a computer port in here but it doesn't do much huh? okay yeah there is an ECU in this car as well okay, yeah. okay. but it doesn't do much huh? <laughs> you know those first generation motronic systems okay yeah, yeah Bosch motronic yeah. Okay. yeah okay so thank you so much Mike you're welcome <laughs> you know you know, you guys that are thinking, you know, or worried about owning classic cars, you know, don't worry too much, you know, do a bit of research on those cars, you know, just go and do it. Because the interaction that these uh, old cars give you, uh, no new car can replicate that. Yes. And I think the community as well, because yes. there are so few of you. Correct. So you all tend to stick together, help each other out yes. whenever you're on, Correct. like whenever there's a problem, everyone yes. is very genuine to, oh, I found this, oh. Maybe yes. you can go to this yes. website or oh, maybe you can order yes. in from Correct. you know overseas. I mean just like for instance like this particular car, I have an intake manifold mm -hmm. you know, thanks to one of my buddies. Mm -hmm. yeah. He saw it at the car shop yeah. and there were only 500 units made in the world and I have one of them. And this stuff is now going in the, in the internet for about 2-3 thousand US dollars. <laughs> you know so yes. things like that, you know the community. Yeah. 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 And also Thanks to the Evo community, you know, we we meet a lot of really car guys. Like yeah, that, like know. my dad. Uh, yeah, like my dad, and uh, it's not about the car brand. Yes, you know, it's yes. about enjoying the drive. Yes, you know, yes. appreciating each other car. Yes, you know, and not actually bitching about other people. You know what I do, how many horsepower I get. <laughs> Correct. Like, oh, none of those shit. You know, it's just about you know, loving the drive. Correct. But right. if you're interested in that, you know, the any you know. <laughs> yeah, you want power, I can give you power, no problem. And so if anyone that is interested, just head on over to DNA Tuning and drop them a message. Yeah. Mike will be happy to reply any questions that you all might have. Yeah. So yeah, thank you so much, Mike. You're welcome. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Alright guys, it's stop raining. He's gonna take us around in the car. Uh starting with the bonnet open lah, huh? So Mike, what have you done? Who, your 25 year old girlfriend? Well, uh, my mistress, as my mistress. wife calls it. Yeah. Uh, nothing much on the engine, you know. Yeah. Obviously, I have re the engine okay. you know, with uh, a DNA tune on it, you know, stage 2 tune on it. Uh, one of the main features of this car, which I did, is actually the intake manifold. Uh. We call it the BSR, uh, which was done by the uh, so-called Volkswagen Motorsport Division, division uh, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, basically what it does is that uh, at low speeds, low engine RPMs, it splits the engine into like two three-cylinder engines, so it runs more efficiently, give you a bit low end torque, you know, a bit more low end torque, and then once you hit, uh, I can't remember why I set it at, I think maybe at 4000 RPM, it opens up, so you get the full six cylinders oh. together. Okay, mm -hmm. that gives you the extra power. Uh, what I've actually done recently is Isaac wanted to to hear how the VR6 raw, so I had actually you know just DIY and put in uh, open pot on it. Uh. So, so that's how you hear hear the VR6. So before this, it was you couldn't hear it. Uh, not not so much. Oh. 
Ah, when we had the original airbox on lah. I see. Yes. So we have Isaac to thank for that. Correct. <laughs> so what you were hearing now, yep. you know, you've got to thank Isaac for that. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, other than that, we rebuilt the head on this car. Okay. Know, rebuilt the cylinder head. Mm. Uh, you know, with uh, Brian's help, you know, back then, about six years back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the car still running on its original piston, piston rings. You know, the car has, uh, I think, about 106,000 miles on it. Yeah, so still running on the original uh, engine. Yeah. So yes, or older Volkswagens are more reliable. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the serious. answer there. Yeah, serious. And this is yeah. still the original paint. No, it's not the original. It's the original color. Original color, but yeah. you've repainted it once. Uh, I think it's on its second paint job lah. Okay. Yeah. But still looks so good. Yeah. Everything else. Uh, I did the brakes. You know, I put bigger brakes on it. Okay. Uh, because of all the toge sessions I do with you guys. If not, I cannot stop. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep going. Yeah, yeah. And the wheels are slightly bigger, 16 inch wheels. You know, Before that? Wheels. Before that, it was on the original speed lines, uh, which is 15 inch. Oh, yeah. okay. 15 the 15 inch. inch wheels, I cannot fit the brakes in, so I had to go 16 inch. And again, 16 inch tires were cheaper. <laughs> 16 inch, cheaper than 15 inch. Yes, because it has an odd size, uh, 205, 50, 15s. Which I is uh, odd size for Malaysian standards. Uh. I, I, I also noticed that this is actually not a straight line. This actually curves up a bit yes. at the back here. Yes, all the way oh. to the back here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, oh, that I didn't up. notice yeah. that. That's why the back happening. is a bit chunky, uh, you feel. Yes. And a very short tail. Yep. So it feels like, you know, like a cheetah going to sprint all the time. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, big, big, big behind. This was the design language of. Uh, Late 1980s Volkswagen. <laughs> boxy, yeah? Boxy, boxy. Even the lights, the tail lights, the yes. headlights are very boxy as well. Yes. Yes. Okay. This is very similar to the Mark II Golf, uh, which has the uh, chunky rear yeah, end. Uh. Okay, mm. okay. So the first thing that I felt when I got in was the space and the seating position. It seems very much like my MX-5. I love the seating position of my MX-5. So your legs are actually elongated like this. Yep. So it's not like a chair sitting position or uh, a lot of the newer cars or the hatches actually now, you actually sit upright. Yeah, so as you can see, Mike is sitting at an angle down like this. And how tall are you, Mike? I'm almost six. Uh. Six, almost six yeah. feet. Almost but six feet. <laughs> You look completely fine, yes. completely uh, comfortable. Completely relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, this dash, I loved the design language during this time, this generation, because it is so driver centric. Everything is surrounding the driver. The passenger gets the glove compartment and the aircon vent. That's it. You, you can't really touch all this. Five speed manual. Your coin holders here. Yep. This was a cigarette lighter back then, not a power boat socket. Yep. And your your dials, Proper. these dials. See that cigarette? Got my coin <laughs> some more. Yeah man. Stick your cigarette there. So those were the fun times. And these buttons here. The convent. Oh these analog. These analog dials right here. Yep. And these are mouths. So the outside is mouse, the inside yep. is KMH. So just now we were doing 80, 90 kilometers an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and this is stock as well, right? Yeah, so stock. everything in yeah, here stock. is stock except the gear, gear knob. knob. Mm. Yeah. Stolen from a TT. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. and to adjust also it's here. Yeah, adjust the quite cool, yeah. So creaky, uh. yeah. I actually creaky. like that sound. Yeah, creaky Older sound. Older sounds. Yeah. And then you adjust your your seat. Your seat recline. Yep. And then you've got your height. Yeah, yeah, the height one is I've never experienced this type of mechanism. Yeah, I can bump bump myself up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So that goes down. Yeah. And even for the rear, it actually slants down as well the yeah. seat. Sorry for the mess guys. Oh am I I show here, no mess. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it slants down and there's quite a lot of leg room. But because it's a 2 plus 2 and it's sort of a hatch, you don't get much headroom at the back. Yep. Uh, there's also actually a sunroof. Have you heard yes. of sunroof? Yes. But mechanism not I okay lah, huh? You need all these characteristics of the car one. 
so yes that that's about it thank you so much guys i hope you enjoyed this video of the corrado and now we're heading off thank you so much mike welcome yeah. please give bang a like <laughs>